By the end of this lecture, I'd like you to describe a generalizable search pattern for MSK radiographs, to find common words in MSK radiology, and know the basic interpretations of a fracture and a bone tumor. This search pattern will apply to pretty much any MSK radiograph you encounter. Start with the bones, hardware if there is any, joint spaces, alignment, and soft tissues. For example, in the shoulder, I would say no fracture or osseous destructive lesion. Frontohumeral and acromioclavicular joint spaces and alignment are normal. Visualized lungs are clear. No focal soft tissue swelling. For the hip, it's the same. No fracture or osseous destructive lesion. Hip joint space and alignment is normal. Right sacroiliac joint is normal. No focal soft tissue swelling. The knee falls right in line too. No fracture or osseous destructive lesion. Joint space and alignment are normal. No focal soft tissue swelling. Here are a few MSK specific definitions that will help you get started in describing radiographs. This is a normal hip of a 13 year old. The cortex is the outer part of the bone composed of compact bone. The word cortex derives from the Latin for bark, like on a tree. The medulla is the inner cavity of the bone. The epiphysis is the end of the bone. This starts as cartilage and grows and ossifies to contribute to longitudinal length of a bone. At skeletal maturity, it will be covered in cartilage. The physis, the area of endchondrial ossification, also known as the growth plate. An apophysis, similar to epiphysis, but this is a secondary ossification center that does not contribute to longitudinal length of the bone. Metaphysis is a transitional portion with thinner cortex than the diaphysis. Diaphysis, also known as the shaft of the bone, thick cortex with cancellous bone. An anthesis is an area of tendon insertion. There are multiple throughout the body where the arrows here are pointing to the anterior superior iliac spine, where the sartorius inserts, and the anterior inferior iliac spine, where the rectus femoris inserts. The trochanters and ischial spines are other examples of antheses. In the hands and feet, directions are a bit different. For the hand, towards the thumb is radial, towards the little finger is ulnar. On the lateral view, towards the palm is palmar or volar, and towards the back of the hand is dorsal. The foot is similar with volar or plantar and dorsal, but AP foot is more straightforward, lateral and medial. There are two ways to describe angulation. My preference is to describe where the apex is. The apex is laterally angulated and the apex is medially angulated. However, you will also hear varus and valgus. Varus is when the apex of the curve points away from midline and valgus when the apex points towards the midline. A silly mnemonic I used is to think of a German farmer with rickets who is trying to hold a pig between his legs to put a tag on it. When he looks down, he is surprised to see the pig has run off and exclaims, Varus my pig. Fracture descriptions will be a common part of your first MSK rotation. This image is from the Greenspad book referenced at the end, and there are many helpful figures in that book. First off, the goal is to describe the distal fragment in relation to the proximal fragment. Describe the fracture plane and describe where it is in space. Describe the angulation as we did on the previous slide. Finally, describe associated abnormalities. Fracture healing will also be a large portion of the workflow. Full fracture healing discussion is beyond the scope of this lecture, but if a fracture heals appropriately, the fracture lucency will get less distinct with development of endosteal and periosteal callus, and the alignment should be near anatomic. Here is an example of fracture healing. Try to describe the initial radial fracture here using descriptions we talked about earlier. I'll go ahead and show you how I would do it. A transverse fracture through the distal radial diaphysis is overlapping and dorsally displaced one shaft width. The fracture shows mild apex radial angulation. Soft tissue swelling surrounds the wrist. As the fracture heals, we can see callus formation and progressive improvement in alignment. This is a kid, so they heal great and they don't have to be perfectly aligned initially. For every bone tumor, there are six descriptors you need to fully characterize a lesion. Going through each of these are beyond the scope of this lecture, but here are the options for some choices for each. Location, which bone and where in the bone. Matrix, what are the internal contents. 
chondroid, osseous, or fibrous. Transition zone, narrow, is well circumscribed, and a wide zone of transition is indistinct. Is there any bony destruction or periosteal reaction? Finally, is there any soft tissue component beyond the bone? Thanks so much.